for this problem. Remember when you have negative exponents, it just means it's where it belongs. And so this negative 3 tells you put it in the bottom. That's where this answer comes from. Once again on number 8, also we have some negative exponents to deal, deal with. So before I even handled anything with the variables, I moved everything so you had positive exponents. This c negative 4 comes down and becomes c to the 4th. b to the negative 5th comes up and becomes b to the 5th. The 7 and 14 cancel out just like if it was a fraction, because it is. 7 is divisible by 7 one time, 14 two times. 7, divide 14 by 7 and you get 2. So that's where the 2 comes from. After you move everything to where it belongs, it's a matter of subtracting or adding exponents. The b's had their exponents added because it's a multiplication problem up there in the numerator. So b to the fourth times b to the fifth was b to the ninth. The a's had their exponents subtracted because you had one in the numerator, one in the denominator. So there were four left in the denominator and c to the fourth stayed where it was. In this number nine it's deceptively easy. Anything to the zero power is one. So this is just a really ugly way of writing one-fifth, okay? But not really too much to it as far as a problem goes. Oh, everything to the zero power is always equal to one. Correct. Anything to the zero power equals one. So this whole big thing on the top just turned into a one. So we like zero powers. It makes something, it just turns it into a one. All right, and in number 10, once again, this y to the fourth is not where it belongs. You bring it down because of the negative. Then you can handle things. The x's, there's five up top and two down the bottom. That means when you cancel, you get three left in the numerator. And in the denominator, you have three and four more, which gives you seven. Okay, so remember our key when you have the negative exponents is move it where it belongs first. Then do your subtraction. <coughs> For scientific notation, remember I showed you how to do that in your calculator? You can just put that number in, push the mode button, and then choose scientific, and then hit enter twice, and you end up getting it in scientific notation. Or you can do actually what's a little easier, put a decimal between these two numbers and count over one, two, three, four, five places. 2.5 times 10 to the fifth. Same with number 12. It's easier actually to just count over, but you can use your calculator if you want to. 1.7, put the decimal here, and you count how many place values it moved. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But it's a negative exponent because it moved to the right. All right. That's that one. Now, now I know that that was really fast. If you need to see it again, make sure you log on online. Okay. The next, hold on. What I want you to do is write these down, and you're going to really quickly try to do those in your calculator. And all right, to go over this answer right here. You, in your calculator, you would put 8.6 second comma negative 4 divided by 2.15 second comma 2. And when you do this, your calculator would show 4e negative 6. You can't write your answer like that. You have to write it as 4 times 10 to the negative 6. You have to write it to show me that you know what your calculator told you as an answer. Once again, for number 12, you would put into your calculator 3.2 second comma, which would give you that little e, 7 times 6.8 second comma 4, and you'd get 2.176 times 10 to the 12th power. It would give you 2.176 e12. So 
that's one that you just need to go through. You need to be careful. You need to work that out. I appreciate how you were helping each other for those that weren't quite remembering. Okay, check your notes carefully you if you don't up, want to. I want it just what you see on your calculator. Okay. All right. All right, so the next one, here's four more problems. I want you to take your time, write down, um, give it a try. Here we go. Here's the explanation for these. For number 13, if you remember the way we talked about doing these, dividing it up into two problems, it's not really distributive, but sometimes people think of it that way because it's this over 5 and this over 5. So it gives you two different problems to do. 20 divided by 5 is 4x. 35 divided by 5 is 7. This one, this is a sum or difference in the denominator. I can't really break it down that way. You can't break up the sum in the, or difference in the denominator. So here, if we set it up as a long division problem, um, you're always asking yourself, what times this first variable equals this one? So 7 times this one equals this one. Then when you multiply the 7 times each one of these, we get 7x minus 49, remainder 0. There isn't any more pieces. This one just has one answer, just, just the 7. So here's your one answer, just the 7. Okay. Uh, for the next two, for number 15, we're going to move on to that one. For number 15, right down here in red, Set it up as long division, okay, dividend and divisor, here's the divisor, here's the dividend, x plus 2, x, x times what equals x squared, x times x. Distribute that out, you have x squared minus 2x, here's the part people forget, don't forget to change those signs so that you're adding columns instead of subtracting, it makes it easier. Don't forget to do that. That's the biggest place where people make mistakes. So negative 6 and negative 2 is negative 8. Bring down the negative 16. Then ask yourself, what times x gives you negative 8x? That's where your negative 8 comes from. Multiply that out. Subtract. Well, it's the same, so it just comes out to be 0. So your answer in this one is a nice simple x minus 8. Okay? Then we look at this one. This is a product. When you have a product or you have a monomial down here, then it's perfectly legal to split it into two problems. So 12ab cubed over 6ab, 18a to the fourth, b to the fifth over 6ab. Then you can cancel right within each one of these little units. These cancel to make a 2. The A's completely cancel out. They're gone. Cubed over B to the first makes B squared. There doesn't end up being anything left in the denominator. So it's just 2B squared. Same with this. Nothing is left in the denominator. So we have minus 3 because these cancel out. 4 up here and 1 down here means that there's really 3 up in the top. 5 minus 1 gives you 4. And there is your answer. All right. And what's your question? Uh, for a monomial, you can just simplify right there. Yep. But for a binomial, you have to divide. Yep. You're, I mean, you're still technically dividing, but yeah, you can split it up like this if there's a monomial down the bottom. If there's a binomial, you can't do it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. Here is divide using long division. We want to make sure we review that. We want to make sure we review synthetic division before we get done today. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at how this works. Once again, you put what you're dividing underneath, and on the outside you have what's going in. x times x is x squared. That's why you picked that one. And you'd end up with x squared minus 5x. 
Don't forget you have to change the signs before you put them together because you're actually subtracting what you get here in long division. So negative 12x and positive 5x is negative 7x. Bring down your 35. Then you say, what is it that is multiplied times x that gives me negative 7x? That's where your negative 7 comes from. Multiply that out, and we notice that it matches exactly. A nice zero remainder makes everything wonderful because then you know that this is just the answer and you can be done with that. Okay. Yes. Negative 7 no. times negative 5 gives you positive. Because this ne it's really this negative is important. So you figure, you pardon me? It would because I didn't write in the change the sign step, but we have to subtract this, which means add the opposite. And when you add the opposite, they actually cancel out. Okay? All right. Now, um, let's take a look at 18. Once again, we put everything underneath here. Um, 3a times what gives you 3a squared? Well, just a. So that becomes 3a squared minus 5a. Then when you put the columns together, you get 6a minus 3. Then we choose a 2. 2 times 3 is 6a. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. But once again, we're subtracting this. So you have to change the signs to make it easier. Negative 3 and 10 is 7. And remember, remainder over divisor. We've come to the end here, just like in, a, just like in regular numbers. When we come to the end, you have to stop, put remainder over divisor, and then this right here comes out to be your answer. So you keep your a plus 2, and any remainder goes over the divisor. This doesn't happen to be a polynomial as an answer. But it is the answer to the question. Now, this is a dividing sign. Remember, we also have the other. I would tell you. All right. So, don't forget. Put this into minus negative form. X minus negative two. That will remind you it's a negative two that goes in the little box. It's got to be in the minus form to find out what goes in the little box. Then these here are the coefficients x to the third, 1, 4, comes from x to the second, negative 5 there, and 2 from there. Once you line it up, you bring the first one down, then multiply times what's in the little box. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Then we add. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Then we add. Negative 2 times negative 9 is positive 18. We add, and you have that remainder. Line these things up. Here's your constant right next to this box. Here's your x term. Here is your x squared term. So you have the remainder over the divisor is that last little bit that is left over. Okay? All right, let me just show you the setup, and then we can go back to any ones that you need, but let me just show you the setup for the other one. Watch out for the hidden zero. Remember, whichever one you start at, if it's the third term, you start at that one, make sure you hit all of the different powers as you go down. So we have 7a to the third, 2a to the second, there is no a to the first, so you need to put a zero there. And then down to negative 5. I mean, you may find a, a problem where you have more uh, zeros to put in, but whatever you start with, you have to hit every exponent power going down until you hit no exponents. All right, then once again, bring down the 7, four, negative 4 times 7, negative 28. Add the column. Negative 26 times negative 4, take my word for it, is 104. That did that in the calculator. Add the column. 
That makes 104. Negative 4 times 104. Negative 416. Add the column. May not look pretty, but we've got a nice answer here. 104. Negative 26a. 7a squared. Here's your remainder over the divisor. And that's how to finish that off in oh, long oh, no. division. Oh, wait. That's it. All right. So make sure that you go over this as many times as you can at dowdylca.tk. Uh, the verbal will be on, the verbal will be, hold on. Huh?